Hello, everyone, and welcome. This session has been designed to support parents and caregivers to instill the love of science in their children, keeping them curious, exploring the wonder in our world. Tonight, we'll explore four questions that will create great family conversations to keep your kids curious and exploring the wonder in their world. I'm James Emerling, and I'm here with my friend and fellow science education consultant colleague, Jessica Ashley. We'll be your host today. And Jessica, would you like to say hello? Hello, and thank you for spending time with us. We want you to fully engage in this session as learners. Think about your own children as we share some of our own stories, conversation starters, and resources to generate some good family conversation. I think like that scientists. We're going to figure things out. And what we're about to share works for any age group too, from preschool on up. Great. Are you ready to get started? Let's do this. Well, Jessica, do you ever wonder about things? I do, James. I wonder all the time. And you know, my kids are the ones who often ask me really good questions about how or why something happens. This one time, I was pumping gas. And when I got back in my car, my son, who was four at the time, asked, how does the gas give the car the energies it needs? And I began to think, how do I explain this to a four-year-old? What about you, James? What do you wonder about? I wonder about a whole bunch of things, and so do my twin boys. Like, why do I sometimes see the moon during the day? Or why do I fill up my bike tires every so often? Or why, when we play Jenga, can I pull out some of the blocks easy and others don't budge? James, I love the question about Jenga. These are called phenomena. You know, observations of things that make you go, hmm, or I wonder how this works. And this is where it all begins. Let's try out our four questions to see if we can figure out a phenomenon. All right, let's do it. These are called phenomena, you know, observations of things that make you go, hmm. So let's try this. Things we'd like to try it with. James, what is something that you're wondering about? Well, I remember years ago, one of my boys noticed there were dead worms all over the sidewalk. And so I'll answer it sort of like he would have. Okay, great. So the first question I would ask your kids is, what do you see or what do you notice? Oh, I see dead worms all over the sidewalk. Mm, is there anything else you saw? Like maybe around the worms? It was raining earlier, but now the sun is shining and it's warm outside. Okay, the second question I ask is, why do you think that happens? Well, maybe the worms dried out in the sun. But why do you think they were on the sidewalk? Hmm, you know, sometimes I have my kids draw pictures to explain their thinking. It helps them to think more about it and make their thinking visible. Like dictionary? Ooh, well, sort of. I think kids and families would totally relate to that. We want them to draw what they see, but we also want them to include what they don't see. What is actually causing this to happen? To do this, they might use arrows or labels or even symbols. As a family, you and your kids could draw what you think is going on and then compare. Scientists do this all the time and they call these conceptual models. So here are my pictures or models of the worms before it rained and after it rained. Before it rained, the worms were digging in the dirt under the ground. When it rained, the dirt was like mud, so it was full of water. And so the worms moved to the top of the ground. James, wow, you put a lot of thought into what you think was going on. Great work. The third question we would ask is, what does it make you wonder? And if they draw it, a lot of times it helps them to think about the different ideas and questions. Like, why did they show something the way they did? Or what's not drawn in the picture? Well, I wonder if the worms came out of the ground so they wouldn't drown, you know, because the rain soaked into the dirt. It also made me wonder if other animals that live in the ground do the same thing when it rains, like moles. Gosh, James, that's a great question. You use what you saw with the worms to think about other animals, like moles. And some of these wonderings can be answered with more observations. Many of them begin with what? And some of the wonderings will be investigatable. Usually investigatable questions begin with why or sometimes how, which then leads us to my fourth question. What can we figure out? 
Why can't I figure out if the worms come out of the ground when it rains so they don't drown? Yeah. So think about that for a moment. You can pause the video now if you want. But what do you think about this? And what could we investigate? Like, what could we figure out? James offered up one idea in his model. Like, maybe they're coming out because they don't want to drown in the soaked filled ground from the rain. So think about that for just a minute. If this happens, what does this tell us about the worms on the sidewalk? Or if it doesn't happen, what would this tell us about the worms? Pause the video now and think about it. And when you're ready, press play. One idea uh, might be to use the hose and soak the ground near the sidewalk and see what happens. Or maybe even collect some worms and some dirt and fill the, the, the cup then with water to see what the worms do. Those are just a few ideas that, that I came up with, but maybe you have some others. That's great, James. So that's it. Four questions that'll help kids think more like scientists to begin to see wonder in the world around them, to learn to figure things out for themselves. What did you notice? Why do you think it happens? What does it make you wonder? And what can we do to figure it out? James, it's a start to a great conversation. Anyway, the most important thing to keep in mind is that parents are asking questions and not giving answers. We don't want to rob the kids of their own discoveries. I can relate to that. Think of the last time you Googled something. Most of the time, your curiosity ended when you were given the answer. The questioning and thinking stopped. We want to keep kids thinking. We want to keep them curious so they learn to solve everyday life problems on their own. You said these four questions can help kids explore or investigate the question they have at any age. But my teens probably won't wonder about worms. They've got their own questions to answer. Yeah, that's right. And these questions can work for, for teenagers as well. A lot of times when they're teens, they've had just enough practice figuring things out. And this four conversation, four question conversation can happen internally. And then they're thinking like engineers. Can you give us an example of a problem a teenager might solve? I sure can. Let's say your teen says, my car won't start and I have to get to work. Okay, so the first question is, what do you notice? I noticed that the car won't start when the key is in the ignition. The lights were not left on and the battery doesn't look corroded or anything. But it was pretty cold last night. And now that I think about it, I might have been getting low on gas. The second question is, what do you think it or why do you think it happened? Hmm. Well, the only thing I can think is maybe I was low on gas and the cold had something to do with it. So my car won't start. The third question is, what does it make you wonder about? Well, James, if I'm thinking like a real team, I'm wondering, can you give me a ride to work or at least put some gas in my car, fill it up, or maybe give me some money? In all seriousness, this could be a launching point for wondering about how to have better rhythm for not running out of gas next time. It's not super scientific, but it gets kids to think about how they might, or excuse me, how they could prevent this situation from happening again. That's right, James. Science helps us to explain the how and the why for the things we see happening all around us. And we can use that information to help us solve problems like engineers do. In the car example, and in that moment, your team will not want you to begin helping them figure out how the gas gives the car energy and why it, it won't start without it. But you can still use these questions to get kids to think about a variety of ways to solve their everyday problems. So let's shift gears a little. So far, we've done a bit of role playing to hear what, is what it sounds like when we keep them curious by asking questions instead of giving answers. What, uh, what we'd like to do now is to share with you a few resources uh, that you can look back on and give it a try with your family. That's right, James. We role played with four key questions. And here's a few more sentence starters for great questions that give rise to a mindset of figuring things out opposed to tell me the answers. 
your children are actually using these same sentence starters in their science classes when they're figuring out puzzling phenomena. These are great questions for getting a dialogue rolling about even ideas that we disagree on. My favorite question here is thinking about evidence and what evidence do you have for that or how do you know that? This can lead to some great dialogue as a family. Something I found interesting is that I use those sentence stems all the time with my wife, with my teen boys, my coworkers. It's amazing how the art of asking questions actually builds relationships between people. We also wanna provide you with some ways that you and your family can be intentionally curious together. James, you're so right. I also use these question stems with my family. And tying this back to science, science is social, meaning that it's not usually one person doing the figuring things out. They're not alone. Science needs more eyes, more ears, and perspectives than just one scientist possesses to develop solutions to some of our planet's most challenging questions. This reminds me of citizen science. Citizen science is a collaboration between scientists and those of us who are just curious or concerned and motivated to make a difference. Students and families can collect data by taking photos of the clouds in the sky, streams, documenting changes in nature, doing some bird watching or categorizing plants, and you can use things like your sensors on your smartphone to be scientists and monitor things like air quality and water. You can also play games to advance health, health and medical research. A citizen science project can involve one person or millions of people collaborating towards a common goal on our globe. Typically, public involvement is in data collection, analysis, and reporting. How cool would that be if your family took on a project like this? That does sound fun. Another great way to be intentionally curious is to engage with uh, your local parks and programs and nature centers. They have some incredible opportunities for families. There are programs like maple syrup tapping each year, um, excavating bones in, in certain parks. They also have uh, formal ways to explore too. Think about the rhythms of nature and let that be your guide. Things like bird and butterfly migration in the fall and spring, life cycles and trails, the changing of the leaves, freezing of the ice and growing a vegetable garden, just to name a few. That's right, James. And it reminds me of one more idea. Tap into your kids' favorite way to play. My kids recently said, I'll race you to the bottom of the hill when we were sledding. This raises so many questions like, well, should we pile on one sled to go faster or would that slow us down? Should we go individually? And which sled is faster based on the material it's made of? If your kids love to play basketball or swim or skateboard, think about the questions you can ask them to do that sport or game better. Like, how can you get the ball in the hoop with more accuracy? Practice might be one answer and the science behind it is another. Take a moment right now, jot down the things that your kids are interested in, make a list. Think about, do they love sports, bird watching, cooking, or maybe helping you fix things around the house? Those are the just right moments to tap into your child's curiosity. It won't feel like learning to them, and it's a perfect time for you to engage them in our four questions. Remember, start with the questions, not the answers. Then they're thinking like scientists. Pause the video now to make your list, and when you're ready, press play. And if you're looking for even more resources, we have a few on the screen. One resource that I'd like to highlight on this screen is the list of trade books. Every year, the National Science Teachers Association puts together the top list of trade books. We know how many uh, parents and kids love to read together. You can use these lists to add to your home library. And the four key questions and sentence starters work wonderfully with the books you can, that you read. Ask your kids, what do you see? Why might this be happening? What do you wonder? That's right, James. Check out this book titled The Street Beneath My Feet. It takes readers on an underground exploration to discover what's really beneath us. The pages fold out beautifully and there's many opportunities to answer the four questions we shared today to launch a fantastic, wonder-filled family conversation. The pages go like this. You start by opening the book just like this and slowly they keep going and going and going down, 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 to help you understand what's beneath our feet. Pretty cool. Well, we'll, leave, we'll, you leave, you. we'll leave you with this. The whole world is a classroom. 
As parents and caregivers, we can ask our children, children questions to turn the ordinary into the extraordinary. We wanna thank you for spending some time with us. At this time, the session has come to a close. Remember, keep them curious.